Peterson Peterson Electric. Uh, this video is going to be about grounding. I wanted to talk to you about that real quick. So yesterday we did a video to you guys about ground rods. So right here it's going to talk about this. And this is the handbook of the 2014 NC. Right here it talks about the grounding for your ground rods, not further than closer than six foot, and how far you drive it is going to be eight foot. And this is referring to Article um, 250.52, and it's talking about at number five. Also, when we're dealing with your grounding installation, they're talking about a water bond that's going to be a 250.52.1. And what that's really talking about is how we have our grounding electrode systems. We can have rods, we can have water pipes, building steel, or Ufords and encased in con concrete. Uh, and you can usually use a rebar in some of that, but most of the time it's good to use um, a bare number four on that. And then the other thing that I wanted to talk to you about in bonding all this, so as we came into our panel, this is our water bond hitting our neutral bar. This is our ground rods right outside here that I showed you yesterday hitting our neutral bar. This right here is going to be what they call, and it's a little different because the manufacturer's already design, designed some of this, so I don't have to size it. But a number six is all that's required on your two ground rods. But because I got four rods coming in, 25066 states that I have to have a number four copper, or that would probably be the next size up, a number two aluminum. So basically in here, this is my main bonding jumper, this green screw. It's bonding my neutral to my cabinet, and my cabinet is bonded to my grounds through my cabinet. So this is already finished. I don't have to size that. But we have other things that are also called, um, here's our grounding electroconductor as it comes up. Let me show you something in here. Here's our main bonding jumper. It's going to tie your neutral and ground together. Again, my inspector didn't really care for that, but in order to size that, I probably would be okay right here to come off with the number six. But again, the cabinet's already picking that up through this, so he didn't bring that up to me. He did talk about my bonding bushing, as this is a raceway coming through. I don't have PVC. I have a metal nipple in there, so therefore I have to bond it with a bushing because the disconnects on the back side of the meter. And so right here, he said I should be at a number two aluminum, but um, this was already here, and he kind of didn't really care. He let that go, but I put in just a split bolt here and extended it to be up to here, which is going to be um, a number four copper. And here's the other thing that he's talking about in here. This is going to be called supply side of equipment bonding jumper right here. That also talks about how to size that if you have to size it. That would be sized off of 25102C1. And the other thing that we were sizing for our number four in 25066 is going to be right here. And I've got a number four uh, aluminum, four out to 250 casing mills, number four copper, number two aluminum. That would be sizing, of course, my bond bushing, as well as my water bond, but not my ground rods. You could do a number four, and it would fit under the acorn, but to save yourself time and money, it's better just use a number six. Um, again, your bonding jumper's already created. Uh, the main supply bonding jumper here as well, but this bonding jumper between neutral and ground he didn't make me pick that up. Um, typically, I thought you're supposed to have that in, and that would be sized. At anything in the panel would be probably a number six would be my thought. Um, so, yeah, so this is a little bit more about grounding. And then, of course, here's a manufactured bar right here that goes from neutral to neutral. So we have more bars or uh, single points to put our neutral conductors in. And these are our grounds right here. We, we are allowed to put two bare copper grounds underneath one lug in residential. Now, in commercial, I don't think that's a good common practice. We might get away with it. But I had enough space on this that this is plenty of space. So I just did one single per each, so it makes it easier for someone to find a circuit that is maybe faulty. And over here, you're never allowed to use the neutrals 
with two underneath each lug, one at a time. So anyways, guys, yeah, we supported our cables up here, as we talk about in the code in Article 334, as well as it talks about in um, your panel boards as you have uh, conductors entering into this raceway. We have our bushings up here, whether we have a metallic screw down or we're going to have an RC Plastic 50. All right, guys, thanks for joining us.